Welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of Valpo Football Weekly. It's brought to you by our friends at Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute. Brenna Vickery with you. Glad to be joined by the head coach of the Valpo Football Program, Landon Fox, after another victorious Saturday to move to 2 0 in PFL play for the first time since 2003. And trailing at halftime, you outscored him 27 0 in the second half at Presbyterian on Saturday. Maybe uh, what was the gist of what you said at halftime, and then how did things turn around after that? Yeah, I mean, it was a, a halftime that was, I mean, there was some emotion there in terms of just um, not focusing on, you know, the task at hand. And, that, and that's being consistent on, on you know, play, a play in and play out. And, and, you know, we're trying to maybe do some things that we didn't do in practice or we're trying to just, you know, talk our way into doing something instead of just going out and doing it and doing it repeatedly play after play after play consistency is the key to success you know obviously especially in football and um we have, that's something we really have to focus on this week is being much more consistent in all all three phases that's offensive if you watch you go back and watch a film you know there's some things offensively we missed that we had opportunities for and defensively um obviously you saw the first half in terms of just not being in position the right spots at times and that consistency you know has to improve for us to be as good as we'd like to be Let's talk about the ability to run the football, particularly in the second half. Aaron Dawson finished with 163 rushing yards, two touchdowns. What stood out to you about the way you were able to move the ball on the ground? Yeah, I thought our, our offensive line, you know, they did an outstanding job, especially, you know, in that third quarter where defensively we only played six plays. And so everybody says, man, you guys were so much better um, on defense in the second half. And I was like, yeah, we didn't play. We didn't play. And it makes it a lot easier to, to, to be good. And so you, you give credit uh, starts up front. Um, but we still have to be, you know, like the consistency on their end as well. We, we, they're going to watch film and they're going to see themselves where they're going to have other opportunities. Uh, but good start up front, good uh, scheme by our coaches, and then the ability to make people miss at the running back position if you see the yards after contact um, was big. And so we're going to continue to count on those guys to win those one-on-one -on -one matchups. You mentioned you weren't on the field defensively a lot in that third quarter, and part of that was Colin Graves and kind of a momentum-changing interception. How important was that play, and how important is it for you as a defense to maybe start to force some more of those turnovers going forward? That was something we talked about going into the game, and we didn't do a very good job of, but the one that we, we, we did get is we talked about creating short fields for our offense and um, just our inability to you know create turnovers, you know, fumble recoveries, cause fumbles or interceptions we have to do a much better job of. And so I think we're only at five on the year. And um, that was a big one though. When you create those short fields, you create an opportunity. And that, that was a huge part of the game. And, um, and for his, you know, his ability to make the play gave a short field and then we scored a touchdown. And so we'll, we'll have to find, continue to find ways to do that. I wanted to ask you about the balance of the offense, 223 rushing yards, 240 passing yards. How nice is it to have that type of balance? And maybe as a defensive coach, how tough is that uh, from a defensive standpoint against an offense that features that type of balance? I'd say it's extremely challenging. You know, if I sit here and, um, you know, try to game plan, and if you're trying to think, hey, can we stop the run? Can you, can you double team a guy? Can you put – you, you're just going to have to really, in my opinion, you're just going to play sound based defense and you're not going to get a lot of gimmicks. You're going to have to play every part of it. You know, if it's a, a receiver out of split end or you have a guy, a flanker, the ability to run the football and, you know, can they load the box? You're just going to play. They're, we're going to continue just to get sound defenses played against us because they need to try to, um, in my opinion, do a great job of just taking, trying to, to, take care of all the pieces on offense. And the only way, really the only way, in my opinion, that, that, that we're going to cause problems for ourselves is we don't become selfless. There's a lot of weapons out there. And so, you know, you, you, those guys got to understand, you know, the play doesn't care who makes it. And when the ball comes to you, that's your opportunity to make a play. And so you're going to see, you know, there's just times when the ball was meant to go to a playmaker and we're not doing the right things. And, you know, I remember a couple of slot fades where we're not holding the line and, um, the guys have to do those things in order, you know, if, if you want to make a play at a certain time, because there's so many, there's only one ball to go around. You, you have to, you have to do the right things. And that goes from both, both sides of the ball. Again, you, you need to be on the right spot on defense and the right position on defense. If you want to make a tackle or cause an interception or so that consistency piece of it has to continue to improve. It's who's your helmet week for the newcomers on your team, the freshmen on your team. How do you explain this rivalry and what it means? Yeah, I mean, it's it's an in-state rival. I mean, we, I mean that's something that we talk about. I mean, you're separated by two hours. And, um, 
you know, the one thing that we always say here is, I mean, we're, we're, we're not going to shy away from it and we're excited about the opportunity to play in that type of game. And, um, and I'm sure they are as well. And so, um, there'll, there'll be a lot of emotion leading into the game by both teams. And the big thing that we have to understand is you don't play with emotion, you play with passion because we can't make emotional decisions out there and, and cause, pe- you know, penalties. And we're not concentrating on the main thing, keep, keeping the main thing, the main thing, just concentrate on what we, what we need to do offensively, defensively, special teams wise. So our, we can't become distracted from the game because there is emotion and that emotion is great. I mean, that's, it makes the rivalry fun on both sides of it, you know, for them and for us, but we can't, don't, don't forget what we're doing in terms of, you know, playing a football game. Oh, the, the team down there, as you like to call them, uh, maybe a rough year, a year ago, but a big statement last week with a 31, nothing win over Dayton under a new head coach. In what ways are they improved from last season? Yeah. I mean, to me, they're, they're much improved. Now, that being said, the one thing I would say is, I mean, they have a lot of guys back and if you look at their roster, um, that's a veteran team and, you know, there's going to be some, you know, you see some, you know, red shirt, sophomore, those, those guys have been in the program for three years. So yeah, I think you credit the new staff for being able to, to retain those guys. And then they brought in a couple of guys in terms of a couple of transfers at defensive end, you know, senior, a receiver, it's a grad transfer. So you add uh, that experience. And to me, that's, there's a lot of guys have played a lot of football. And so um, they understand it and they've picked up the schemes really well offensively, defensively, and special teams, and they play hard. They play extremely hard. So they're buying in to, to what, uh, you know, their coaching staff, it, it, you know, is saying, and you can, you can see it on film. And so it'll be a challenge, you know, and that physicality part of the game will be a big part of it. Well, it's two teams that should have some confidence going into this week, and it's the Hoosier Helmet game. Tickets on ValpoAthletics.com slash tickets, a one o'clock kickoff at Brownfield on Saturday. And we will talk to you again next week on Valpo Football Weekly, and it's brought to you by our friends at Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute.